Hi, I'm Ryan Bidigary. I'm competing at national level uh, for probably four years. Uh, maybe I've done four or five shows in the Masters division. This year, I'm doing the Western. Uh, one week from now, my height is 5'11". Weight right now is 260. Uh, I'm 44 years old. And I'll be competing in the Open. I'm working with Justin Harris with Tropin Nutrition. How long have you been working with Justin? I've been working with Justin since 2017. Uh, North Americans was our first show. We took fifth. Last year, we fell a couple of spots into like a ninth position, I believe, in the Super Heavies both times. And uh, this year, uh, due to scheduling, we're going to do a state level to stay qualified. And plans for next year is still open, but uh, we want to do a, another national level in the Masters division, 40 and up. Okay. And good off season uh highest even at 44 it's the highest weight still um i have a couple pictures i posted um in the 300s low 300s and uh in the past we've gotten right into the 280s but we really pushed the envelope this year and really pushed the food and you know the off season i tell you what can be harder than the prep um forcing that food day in and day out uh is for months a prep no, no. Uh, we get about, depending on where we were at in the off season, we did anywhere from three to four cheat meals a week. But other than that, it was rice, potatoes, chicken, and fish. Um, I did a little bit of uh, beef, but um, the chicken and fish was the staple. Uh, and on certain days, uh, the low carb, lower carb days, the days that I don't work out. We did do added fats, uh, mainly from avocado, macadamia nut oil is a favorite of mine. It's easy. Um, some at whole eggs maybe here and there. Uh, almond butter. Almond butter I did a lot of. I haven't used almond butter a lot in this prep, uh, mainly avocado or, you know, guacamole. Uh, but uh, at this point here... Uh, we're super low carbohydrates. Um, in a lot of days, it's just vegetables and some added fats along with the meats. Uh, mainly white fish and chicken. Uh, I do a lot of vegetables, uh, like in cauliflower, uh, some squash I've done, onions, mushrooms. Um, that's about it. That stuff like that? Yeah, stuff like that. Okay, but uh, go ahead and you did legs. So go ahead and, uh, take it. Oh yeah, today's legs. So today was my last leg workout. Nothing uh, heavy compound, just mainly depleting glycogen. I don't want to hold too much water in my legs, create too much disturbance, and fade them out for the show. So we did a lot of. Uh, high rep um, some we did some leg we started off with leg extension some high rep leg extension maybe three or four sets ended up with a drop set from there we moved to the strive leg press the strive has a cam where we can uh, increase or decrease the weight in certain positions uh, in this case we did a uh, heavy lockout at the top uh, where most of the weight was at the top uh, end of the mo movement uh, the you bands say, yes the bands. okay so we we rigged some bands this time and I have to actually give credit to uh, Chris Duffin on this uh, I seen him do some bands around the back of his knees on a belt squat and so I wanted to try to figure out how I could implement this in a in a leg press so I anchored the, the bands uh, above, uh, above the leg press by suspending a, a lat pull down uh, mechanism. And we went be behind the knees. And at the point where 
you're almost fully extended there's that little bit of uh, extra squeeze you have to do to really lock out those knees and really lock out the top position and this was able to give me a little bit more of a um, uh, a load at the very top um, and the, the bands work against you uh, pulling your knees up pulling your legs up so it really takes um, some effort to really straighten the leg at that point and it's it's a safe movement and we're able to really increase the tensity without increasing any danger risk, or any risk injury. of injury yeah. no, definitely. That's awesome. I'd, and I've never seen anyone doing that. That's very cool. uh, from there I we moved to hamstring yeah. yeah we went to the hamstring um, I used the wedges from prime and this will give us a little bit more of a stretch on the hamstring uh, we don't have to uh, go as quite as deep um, it's a little bit uh, an advantage to the glutes and, and the hamstring right at that uh, um, at the lower point of the movement um, we used the trap bar which uh, I feel is uh, a little bit more comfortable using a straight bar in that uh, in that exercise. And you can stand inside it actually. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Um, from there, we went to the sissy squat, and so for the sissy squat, we also used a resistant band, put it around the waist, uh, and this gave us some resistance when we were standing up. So we really needed to. Uh, squeeze the glutes and push out the pelvis um, to, to stand up and the chains just added more resistance for the top instead of holding dumbbells or a kettlebell or what have you it's just a little bit easier to balance and plus you're using all your stabilizers and everything you're doing right yeah. exactly yeah. exactly I think we had a uh, incident or two getting out of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, your legs had to be dead by that point. They were. They were. Say, yeah. Um, the yeah. So uh, that was, uh, you know, it's it's a different um, type of feeling. It really beats up the legs. Plus, I my legs have just been disastrous from all the cardio. Uh, it's it's really hard to um, uh, get that any type of uh, heavy heavy weight or heavy load um it's just really cardio -wise, uh, cardio wise we're doing a half hour fasted and then 20 minutes post okay. post workout so the fasted is six days a week and then the posted uh post uh, workout cardio is my on my four training days okay, no hit cardio no, there uh, it's actually hit, it is hit. yes okay. um now the hit hasn't been as hard of a hit uh, <laughs> as of lately <laughs> you know it's been slowing down uh, but uh, you know it's uh, you know maybe the hit um, when you're that low on calories uh, really maybe uh, uh, depletes you so much where I think maybe some more muscle loss occurs but it's done the trick uh, Justin has increased it accordingly as the intensity went down and I feel like my I have lost some leg size obviously but you know in that in this case it's if, it, if it's if you're not ripped or lean enough the skin's not thin enough it doesn't matter anyway so don't even show up yeah and it's not a size game especially at state level it's a yeah it's a di it's a diet diet contest at this point the muscle was all year round um, and then the last 16 weeks, it's just a uh, diet game, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. Um, and then you, I think you finish. Let's see, with uh, hamstring curls. Or? Uh, yes, hamstring curls. We went to hamstring curls. It was something uh, simple. Just I think we did three sets, and then the last one I did a little bit of a drop with some really small partials at the end. Okay. And Tell us about your, your yeah. stretching is very unique, bud. Oh like yeah. For a lot, I mean, I've seen guys stretch, but not. You're, you're very flexible for one for a big guy. You know, in in the beginning, um, I don't know if we got anything on on video captured any on video, but I do a lot of uh, hip warm ups. Um, I'll start with um, uh, pivoting. Uh, I think they're called airplanes. Uh, where I'm moving the hip back and forth, um, standing at a, uh, a horizontal position, 
uh, with um, one leg up and I'll just rock back and forth, warming up each hip at a time. And then I'll get into a squat, a squat position and kind of push out on the knees. Uh, from there, I'll rock back and forth with one knee on the ground uh, and warm up the hip in that position. And then from there, I'll do some uh, split squats to uh, to warm up the you know the entire leg and and the hip from that position, and then I'll go into the workout slowly and start warming up from there. But at the end, yeah, the I th the the stretching, you know, uh, if you're not mobile, and uh, you know, it's hard really hard to force the weight on you when you're when you're going heavy and to push yourself into a position that you can't do without any weight. So if you can't get in that position without weight you really shouldn't be doing it with weight no. that's where the injury occurs so yeah. Yeah. and then of course I like to do that static stretching at the end when we're already warmed up and there's less chance of straining something or injuring yeah. a muscle yeah no definitely that's, it's impressive I mean I don't think enough people probably stretch in general people just kind of want to treadmill for eight minutes or something yeah you know it's it's hard to hold on at 44 years old and it's what you have to do if you want to, you know, keep playing the game. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about your outside bodybuilding life here with uh, your business and stuff and what you do. All right. Doing. Well, uh, the gym, the little gym is in the back of the shop. Uh, we joke around and uh, we call it the underground because it's unknown. Yeah. Uh, to to the public or to any of the any of the customers really, but uh, it's an outdoor power equipment dealership. Uh, Steel's our main line. Uh, Steel carries uh, they're they're known for their chainsaws, but they carry a full outdoor power equipment uh, product line: blowers, trimmers, hedge trimmers, etc. Uh, and uh, so during the day, you know, we're repairing, selling products, selling parts. And then, you know, when the when the chance comes, I sneak back there and, you know, uh, get my training in. Uh, I have a typically uh, three to four different training partners that come in and, and uh, train with me uh, different times of the day, sometimes uh, in the off-season here at the shop. Oh. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, I had a little bit of carbohydrates today. I've had a couple meals in me, uh, and you know it's you just got to put the work in at this point, even though you don't feel like it. Uh, so it's basically just doing the reps, and you know in the off season is where I typically try to do uh, progressive overload on most of my uh, core exercises, like you know the first two uh, compound movements, uh, depending on what body part it is, and then from there they're more of uh I, I focus more on i guess the form and uh reps and you know just really feeling the muscle work what, i don't know if i ever asked this right what actually drove you into the into the sport or what did you like about bodybuilding that got you into it yeah so um probably the 80s movies <laughs> you know, uh, the 80 movies, you know, you're, you're Stallone fan, you're, yeah, you're right, uh, Schwarzenegger, of course, um, you know, every, there was all kinds of action heroes, um, I was actually even going to pull out uh, my Van Damme uh, leg stretcher uh, for the video, but it, it was, I, I didn't do it, but yeah, all those movies, uh, you know, really influenced me as a, as a kid, but uh, as as I got older into my 20s and started getting out of shape, you know, I found a gym membership, found a powerhouse, and then it all kind of started from there. And now back uh, back then, it was since I had kind of a late start. I didn't really start till I was in my early 20s. You know, I had to really build a foundation before I even thought I was ready for stage. So I'm talking, you know, seven, eight years of just training, trying to build on the size, you know, because back then, you know, we'd be in the magazines and seeing all these mass monsters. And, you know, it's, it, it, and I didn't go to the state level show, so I really didn't see, you know, 160 pound, 170 pound guys, you know, on stage. Everyone was just, you know, 250 plus, you know, so I always thought I wasn't ready. Little did I know that you really grow in and out of the shows.
dieting down, coming back up. And that's really, you know, how you make big leaps and jumps and yeah, no, advances really in people muscle. People walk around really aren't usually, they're not on stage at 280 or something. Exactly. Exactly. But, uh, you know, there wasn't really the uh, the media that was out then. You know, it was just the pros and the top amateurs that were in the magazines. Now we didn't have the, uh, you know, the Facebook and the Instagram and anything like that. So you know it, I was kind of kept in the dark and certain things so uh, I guess I had a late start but yeah. you know make up for it and you know no regrets I had you know a lot of you know uh, experiences that probably a competitive bodybuilder doesn't have in his 20s yeah. so yeah. it worked out